all our uh, interviews are audio and video recorded, okay? And because we transported you here, you're not under arrest, you're free to go at any time, but I still got to Mirandize you because we technically brought you here in our car, okay? All says you're very to remain silent, and anything you say can and will be against your court law. You have great to have an attorney present while you're being questioned. If you choose to make a statement, you can stop at any time if you wish to understand your rights. Okay. Back, um, when when did you, when were you friends with Carlos Owen Dovar? I'm not as sure if I was. Okay, you're not even sure. Let me see if I can find this photograph here. Do you know who he is? Not off the top of my head. The last time I lived over in Dewey Street was almost 10 years ago, maybe. You remember him from Dewey Street? The name sounds familiar, but it's, uh, that face is not right popular enough. That's Carlos. He looks familiar, I think. It would have been back in like 2000 and... Yeah. Well, that's... Well, that's he looks familiar. Anything that looks more familiar to you? Um, where, where did... Wait, uh... My... We had a, an acquaintance. Her name was Sarah. She was dating a guy that kind of looked like Yeah, he, he, he did that was a girlfriend at one time with Sarah. Okay. Um, do you know... What, what did you know about him? Were you living on Dewey Street or staying there on Dewey Street? Yeah, we had an apartment on Dewey Street for a couple of years what there. What number was that? Uh, 39 Dewey Street, apartment, okay. first floor apartment. Uh, he had a daughter, I think, and then he moved in with his girlfriend there on Dewey Street. With Sarah. Right, with okay. Sarah. Uh, scrawny woman covered in tattoos. Um, trying to see here. Um, she, I think that was like two or three houses up from where we were on our side, you know, going like two or three houses towards up. market? Towards market. Okay. Uh, I think he might have been abusive to her, but I've never yeah. seen anything concrete there. What did you know or what did you hear about that? She had some black and blue marks on her face, a black eye. I remember a really messed up shoulder at one time. Uh, but I, like I said, I... Did she tell you that? Is that something you observed? Or something I observed myself and just... Like, I'm more, more me and my wife Sarah were more friends with that Sarah. Okay. So my your wife, wife Sarah. My wife Sarah. And Carlos's girlfriend at the time was Sarah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think uh, we were friendly enough with Sarah to loan her our car to her at one time, but they parked it in a park lot where it could have been towed, and there was a whole lot of stuff. And, uh, I've only briefly acquainted with that individual. Did you ever know him to be use of illegal drugs or anything like that? Did you guys ever? I mean, think there's a notation on that. It's going if you guys party or smoke weed or so. I just, I'm just wondering. If I believe was there was uh, prescription uh, pills involved, at least uh, Percocets. I think they heard something about that. I mean. Honestly, that was never my thing. But you never, you never partied with them or anything like that. No, she would. I maybe went over there once with my wife to uh, go drinking over there at her house once, uh, but we were only briefly acquainted with this individual. Okay. Now you said you had a little girl. Did your daughter ever befriend uh, his daughter? Or were they ever friends or play together or anything like that at the time? Maybe a few times when my wife when I went over there uh, while I worked because my wife watched my daughter on the days I had her at that time. Uh, but yes. When would that been? What year would that have been? Talking uh, talking like anything four oh six I think. 
so maybe ten years ago. Yeah. Um, um, did the, did she would she your, your daughter go play with her, or would she come down and play with you, your daughter, or how did that work? Uh. I think the daughter actually came to our house once or twice. At any time, um, was the daughter ever alone there with you? Did she talk to you about the things that her that her dad did to her? Not that I'm aware of. No, not to me. I what what was your What was your daughter's relationship? What well, your relationship with the little girl? Was it a good relationship? And did she trust you? Or um, I didn't get really get to meet the daughter too much. So I wasn't really that involved. Right. Um, one of the other reasons why I wanted to bring you here was allegations were made um, regarding you and his daughter. Do you remember what his daughter's name was? No. Okay. It was Sasha. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Sasha. Okay. Allegations were made uh, about 10 years ago. Um, and when this happened, she's saying that uh, you had inappropriate contact with her. Okay. I think I remember now, she did come over to our house before. It's the name for instance, that little blonde girl. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But, uh, yes, we had, thanks to my wife, we had a lot of the neighborhood kids coming over to our house. My wife, a lot of times, uh, takes a lot of the neighborhood kids to the local park. And like that. I like to hang out else. Yeah. Did you uh did you ever have any appropriate contact with her? I was never alone with her. But no, dear God no. So um well here's the deal. Um she was interviewed forensically, okay? Mm -hmm. Um by a forensic interviewer in Allegheny County. Mm -hmm. And she made disclosure there that this happened ten years ago when she was sex and living on Dewey Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that you inappropriate touched her, okay? Now, a lot of people can have a lot of different interpretations of touching. Um, when would have you been alone with her or had any time to spend time with her or did she sit in your lap or anything like that that she could have thought that this happened or?
would take she'd watch and she'd go back in the back room. Uh, there's a TV back there, and at one point you showed her pornographic adult movies and it made her sick. Okay? So I find it very hard to believe, and just to be honest with you, that a six year old girl can be descriptive up into that point, and every both your story and her story makes sense, up into the point where, oh, you showed her Disney movies and not porn movies. She was very descriptive. Well, she point. might have watched those at her parents' house, because yeah. I understand she was left unattended a few times. Okay, and that's right. And your wife, and you watched her, so actually your girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. would watch her. And uh, this was one particular time, it was you and her. Mm -hmm. And you showed her these movies. She was very detailed about this. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, I want you to be honest with me. If you're not being honest with me. I am. Where did you watch the, the, the you said there were some streaming movies. We, I think we had, uh, we had Verizon DSL at the time, and I think we were having uh, the Star streaming package. Okay. I think we might have did that, but my daughter, let's see, 2006, see my daughter would have been three or four. Three or four. So I I didn't really have cable in the house, so we, walked, we had a lot of DVDs, VHSs, Veggie Tales, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, TV in the main living room, the computer in the back room mostly from my wife. Uh, but so when you were with her, you would watch streaming. There was only like TV one time that I was alone with her watching anything like cartoons or anything like that. But as far as anything else, no. One thing I want you to understand is that y you understand that why you're here is, is just very serious. Well, dear God, my daughter was a victim of this crap, and this, and so you understand that we need to do our jobs. Well, yes. And make sure we're doing what's appropriate for this case by talking to you about it. Well, yeah. You also understand we're talking to other people. Mm -hmm. We've already talked to other people that have information. And we know a lot more than what we're telling you at this point. Mm -hmm. We're trying to give you an opportunity to set the record straight so we don't have to sit in here for over an hour going back and forth mm -hmm. until we do what's right. Well, you know it's the right thing to do to tell the truth. Well, yeah. I'm sitting here talking to you, I don't think you're telling us everything, though. You're either not being completely honest with us well, this was like almost a decade ago, and I haven't really spent a whole lot of time dwelling on something that was okay. benign. Okay. Here's the deal, Daniel. People make mistakes, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you made a mistake, that's all I want you to do is tell us you made a mistake, and you're sorry for what you did. And get it off your chest. I'm sorry for being a friend to someone who was in a crappy relationship with a dad that didn't spend much time with daughter. So that's you were doing. You were showing her love and affection. Dear God, no, not not if you're applying something else. Well, no, I'm just asking you. That's what you were doing. Trying to I just find it. My whole thing with my, even my own daughter was, even though me and her my, her my her mom were separated was to make a point to do right by my daughter and try to spend as much time with her as I could, even if it cost me thousands of dollars in lawyer fees. So, for me to even think about doing something... But, but that's because your daughter's growing up now. But you have to think of her when she was six years old as well. Something would have happened to her. Yeah. And how, how's that going to affect the rest of her life? And you have to understand, to this young lady that's affected her life as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here. Because it's, it's, it's we're not going to drop it once we walk out of here. We're going to continue to investigate. Well, yeah. But what we need to do is, if this would move any further into any kind of charges or anything, you know, we've got to go to our prosecutors and tell them what kind of person you were when we were sitting here with the interview. Mm -hmm. Okay? If, if you look at it at face value, people are going to think that you're a sick monster. Okay. Yeah. Right? Would you agree? That's well, yeah, mean. but just hearing it. But well, yeah, it, it, there's a stomach uh, hearing about something like but that. But you got to understand that some people have problems that they can't control regarding sexual urges, mm -hmm. and sometimes it, that doesn't make them a monster. All right, it it, it it makes someone have mistakes by doing things that they shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. All right, so.
so if you made a mistake, if you screwed up, that's one thing. But if you're really a sick pedophile monster, that's another. And I don't think you are. And you know you're not, right? Dear God, no. So if you made a mistake and you touched her inappropriately, that's what we need to hear, that it was just a mistake and that you didn't have intent to harm her. Right. I mean, like, the worst thing I might have done was put my arm around her shoulder, okay. sitting on the same bed, watching a movie, but to me, it's like I put my arm around my daughter when I watch movies with her. Doesn't mean I want to touch up my daughter. I understand, but I think after reviewing the interview with her, that a little bit more happened than just that. And if it did, this is the time to get it out and start talking about it, because you're not going to be able to live with yourself if you walk out here lying to us about it be able to think about what happened to her as she grows older. Well, I can't live myself knowing that what happened to my daughter and there ain't Jack I can do about it. Well, there is something you can do about it here regarding this incident. You need to make it right. I didn't do nothing to this child. Because do you think that you have any kind of mental issues? I might be depressed or have anxiety. Okay. But that's the extent of it. Do you understand, though, that if this goes to court with how everything is now, you know, it's going to get out there in the media, people are going to think that you're a monster. But I don't think you're like that. I think you just made a mistake. That's what I think. I don't think you're a monster. I don't. I mean, I don't know what she think happened. Well, here's what happened. I'm going to tell you what she said happened. She said you took her in the back bedroom, you held her by her arms, you admitted you put your arm around her, but mm-hmm. and you had a job, a, an adult porn video playing, but and you made her watch it, and she said she got sick from it, and that you then laid her on the bed and actually forced your penis inside of her, but that's what she said, and she positively identified you, didn't know your name, didn't know you from Adam, she didn't know your name at the time, she's now 16 years old, she was shown a photo array with six other males that look just like you, very similar to you. She positively ID'd you as a person that did that to her. So, like I said, I don't think you're a monster to anyone. Yeah, but no. Dear God, no. You saying she's lying? Yes. Why would she come to us and say this? It happened and then ID you from it. I don't know. When she doesn't know anyone else. I have no ID. I think because it happened. And I think you know it happened. And what I think you need to do... fucking sick. Well, well, is it? Or was it a mistake? Uh, nothing like that happened. I don't remember do anything that? about no pornography. And I sure as hell didn't pull my pants out in front of a, a child like that. No, let's say you pulled your pants out. Well, you told, said something about... You don't have to put your pants out to have sex with somebody. Will you tell us how it happened? You said you don't remember showing What I like so I'm trying to remember from ten years ago. Okay. Well try try to jog your memory because it's pretty important. Did you just watch pornography once or did this occur more than We did not watch pornography. Okay. I she might have she told me she might have I can't remember what she told me, but I remember she told me she used to I don't did she come on to you? Is that something that did she like coming on to you in some way? Not that I can recall. What did she what did she tell you that she did or was doing? Uh I can't remember. I just remember there might have been one time where she was over at the house. But she didn't stay very long. Uh, but have you ever been a victim of anything like this? What do you mean, like? Like an assault or I've been sexual assault. Sexual assault? No, but I've been assaulted plenty of times, and a lot came out of that. You know, a lot of times people can have mixed chromosome, mixed things in there brains that cause them to do things that they necessarily can't control or don't want to do.
do. Alright. I'm trying to figure out what it is with you. Because you're not telling us. And if you need us to just speculate when we if we well, do you can report about this. Speculate all you want. I'm telling you, nothing happened. But that's not the right way to do it. I'd rather hear from you exactly what well, happened. Well, I'm telling you what exactly happened. Nothing like that to happen. Dear God, I spent so much time in frustration trying to get the you know, spend simple time with my own daughter. I can't imagine being destructive like that. But this this is long before this is ten years ago. Your daughter's grown uh, up and, and had my daughter. I mean, this is ten, ten years, years ago. ago. It, it was different then. And no, it, it wouldn't. Have been my daughter was innocent when me and her mom broke up. She was like. Not even two, and then my daughter wasn't even three before I, we saw our first uh, hearing or court office appointment to, to go for custody. Well, this young lady was innocent as well. Well, I imagine, and I imagine she probably with an abusive father. I imagine I can only imagine what this child's probably seen or been exposed to. When you put your arm around her, did you ever go any? Your God further no. than that. I mean, I'm just guessing, but what I might have done. But as far that would have been as far as I can imagine myself going. But as far as anything like pulling body parts out and so basically, at this point, you want us to to go on her story and think you're a monster that you're a type of guy that should be locked up for the rest of your life because you go around doing this to little kids. I mean, that's what you want us to believe now. Because we have a girl who's 16 years old said she was assaulted by you when she was six. She positively identified you. She was very descriptive about where it was and when it happened. And now you're going to sit here and force make us believe that this girl's lying. She just picked you I up. I don't understand her. why she would... Exactly. We don't understand why either. That's why we're talking to you. We want to get the truth from you, and you're not being truthful. And I was, me and my wife were friends to her and this Sarah person. Right. So and what happened? What, what happened in your bedroom that day? What went wrong from the friendship to you taking it to the? Did she come on to you? Was there something that happened that caused you to do that, or you just want to sit here and believe that you're a sick monster and need to be well, locked you up? You can believe what you want. I know. But I'm I telling that. you. I don't want to. I don't want to believe that because I don't think that's the type of. I don't understand why people do have to do. That's why a lot of times me and my wife don't have friends. We try to be decent with people. Sooner or later, the good times stop ending, and we burn out. You know, without friends again. And we don't understand why people do what they do either, and that's why we ask them to come in here. And nine times out of ten, people are going to tell us what actually happened. They're going to make the right choice because you know, not only does it benefit you down the road legally. But it helps you inside too. Oh, yeah. But and if you have an issue or you have something you need to address, now's the time to get it out. I think you made a mistake. I don't think you're a monster. I think you fucked up. By being friends with a person and then this stuff happening, obviously I fucked up with trying to be friends with someone who's obviously having more you issues. You show than a six year old pornography. That's a I didn't show no six year old pornography. Would you be willing to take a lie detector here on that? I can. Right now. I can. And if it comes back negative, that you let your line do us? How know. are you going to explain yourself? I don't to tell you. I don't remember showing her pornography. I sure as hell don't think that would be so something. You don't remember as possible you did. I sure as hell don't believe that'd be something I would want in front of a t minor. Yeah. Let alone was I watching any pornography at that time. Is it possible that it could have happened? Uh, no. She'd say no chance at all. Not at my house, not with me. Have you ever been alone with her anywhere else? No. Is there anything else that you can think that there would be a reason that she's saying this? I don't know that she thinks she's going to try to get uh, financial damages. I don't she, know. She said nothing about money. You know what she said? She said she wants to be able to move all of her life and get this. She don't have money from you. Mm -hmm. Well, she's just well, I, behind her. What I've seen about 
the family she was in at that time. She's not with them anymore. Well, what I know is from that time. I don't know. I haven't been associated with anybody on Dewey Street since I moved out. I pretty much cut ties right. with everybody because problems with the landlord. Right. So, she's with another family who's taking care of her, and this is something that's coming up in her mind that she wants to get behind her. And she doesn't want any money from you. She just wants you to tell the truth. That's what she wants. That's all that she wants. Is you to tell the truth so she can move on. So she doesn't have to live the life that your daughter lives. That's all. She doesn't she doesn't she doesn't want, you know, she doesn't want a monetary gain from you. I can tell you that right now. She just wants to move on. And she can't do that unless you I can go to her and say, Listen, you know what? Danny was sorry. Danny told us what he did and he was sorry. I can't do that if you're not going to be honest with me, Danny. Now, trying to remember, like I think she might have tried to come on to me, okay. like okay. maybe kiss me, okay. but tell us I about didn't let... Yeah, tell it, me about that. I think she was trying to play a game of boyfriend girlfriend, Okay. but I think she tried to kiss me, but... It didn't go beyond that. Okay. So you guys kissed and then what happened? That was it. I I Come did not feel comfortable with her trying to do something like that with me because. How many times did you kiss her? I think she kissed me maybe once or tried to kiss me. On but the lips? Yeah. Okay. But I. That's just gross. I can't even kiss my daughter on the lips. I kiss her on the forehead or the, the cheek. So you got to understand that too. Pe people's family and, and other people are different. There's different ways that people can feel about their family than they feel about other people. Or different ways people can get aroused mm -hmm. um, as opposed to not being aroused around their children. People can be the same age and things like that as well. So you got to you understand we work a lot of cases like this, so we, we see this stuff all the time. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have a problem. Because I can be honest with you, I've interviewed people that need to be locked up. They are sick to society. Those people need to be locked up. And there's people, people that can't control themselves. control themselves and they make mistakes. And we understand that. Well, I've never had an issue with minors. Now, we're not saying they have issues. That's what I'm saying. There are people that just made mistakes. Mm -hmm. And if this is one of them times where a person made a mistake, that's what we need to hear. Because you know what, Danny? Okay? I told you this before. I don't think you're a monster. Like that Dick Kaylee says, he doesn't think you're a monster. We think you made a mistake. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to know. So I can go back to her, Danny. I want to be able to go back to her and tell her, Danny's sorry. Well, Danny, I'm sorry, sorry she thinks there was something more. I don't how many times did you kiss her, Danny? I didn't kiss her. She tried to kiss me, but I did not let her do that. What else happened? That was it. I thought you said that she she did kiss you, and that was gross. Well, yeah, it was gross to her even trying that, trying to kiss me on the lips. Can you let me get mad? See if he's real. Yeah. See if he's real. Right. So, a little kid doesn't make up pornography so you need it, Danny. I mean, she 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 was scripted. She was six years old. Yeah, and she, God knows what she would watch. But she didn't say, "I saw it at my dad's house." She didn't say that. She didn't say, "I saw it at my dad's girlfriend Sarah's house." She said she saw it when you showed it to her. Yeah, and that's she, what she said. Yeah, and my daughter has trouble remembering specific right. details. Well, she obviously knew enough to do where you live. Okay, she obviously knew enough to tell me about your daughter Isis. Okay, how do you think I found out who you were, Danny? She described you to a T. As a matter of fact, she said, back then he looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's how they would find you, Danny. Okay? Well, my name's Daniel, not Danny. Okay, I'm now sorry. I've always gone by Danny. I, I'm sorry for disrespecting you by calling you Danny. Daniel. Okay? My wife, to me, it doesn't matter. Okay. But well, everyone... I'll, 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 uh, I'll honor your wishes. My wife, Daniel. My, okay? You're honoring my wife's wishes. Okay, that's fine. Well, Daniel... We just need to be able to go back to her. Mm -hmm. She's a counselor now. Okay, she's in. She's she's really dealing with a lot. Mm -hmm. 
I want to be able to go back to her and say, you know what? I spoke to Daniel. And he told us what happened. And he's sorry that it happened. She doesn't want no money from you, Dan, Daniel. Daniel. And she's not, she's not, I'm telling you, she doesn't want money from you. Well, I it's not about the money. It's about her clearing her head because of the things that happened to her when she was six. Right. And I don't know if this child is confused about she's things not. that... She, Daniel, she, was, she, she did exactly what you said. Up to the point of the TV when you said she watched, you watched Disney, she said, no, you watched porn. Okay? She doesn't make this stuff up to this point and then just change it, Daniel. She was interviewed by a forensic interviewer, trained to see when children are lying and telling the truth. Okay? She has nothing to gain by saying what she said. Well, I don't okay. know why her story would be this and my story would be Because that. you have every reason to not want to tell me everything that happened right now for fear of what's going to happen to you. She, she had nothing. She, she had nothing. nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. She she has why. I don't really remember too many details. Right. So you might not remember everything. I don't want you to remember everything, but I want you to remember what happened and tell me what happened, what you well, do remember. Well, I told you what happened, and I told well, you. Let's start over again, because you, my, my concern is, I don't want you to sit here and make something up that, that happened, because you keep saying you don't remember the details. Right. But why, why don't you take a break, just get your composure, and start trying to think of the details about how they actually happened. Because until you show me that picture, I barely recognize that person, let alone remember this, you know, song. Because it's been almost 10 years. And you try to put this behind you. Yeah, because I don't. There was really nothing to really dwell on. There is though. Then, then if you're telling me that 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 you didn't have anything to dwell on, you don't have any problem with it. Then it makes me believe that you see nothing wrong with. I think there's a problem with here. guys who do stuff like that, and I think they should probably have their cut off. So you understand why it would be hurtful to you to tell us what happened. Because you don't want to be one of those guys that you think... Well, you don't want to be one of those musters. You don't want to be labeled as that. We're not in here labeling you. We're trying to figure this out so we can move on as well. So we can talk to her and so she can move on with her life. The only place that's going to label you is the, the public opinion because they're not going to get the facts straight. If we had the facts straight in here, then there, there's no question about it. Well, I'm giving you the facts. But then what are they? Tell us what that is. Tell us exactly. Give us the facts. Trying. Like, I'm not sure. Whose idea was to go into the back bedroom? Who, who but I think I remember it seemed odd, but... And then something about her wanting to play boyfriend-girlfriend game. And then she went into the bathroom for a bit. I don't know what was going on there. I well I went in and tried to find a, a movie to watch or something. Because I don't know, for whatever reason I was at the house by myself that day. I don't know if my wife was running kids around. And then somewhere I'm not sure of the time frame, but I don't know if she might have attempted to kiss me and kind of stopped her. Uh, then we probably watched some of this movie. What movie? I can't remember anymore. I, that's the only thing we really had in the house to uh, to watch. I mean, we had, we had the, the stars, but I don't... What was the movie about? I don't remember what it was. I just know that what we had in the house, and there wasn't too many. I had 
plenty of kids movies in the house, but I don't remember stars or being on the stars program enough to realize how many kids programs they had on there. Not to mention it was downloaded slow or something at that time. But then. Uh, well, when you say the, the, the movie, you're talking about an adult movie? Dear God, no. The, the movie. If, if you're capable of remembering this much detail, you should be able to tell us the movie. Sure was. Because she can tell us what movie you watched. I don't remember. Well, she's, she's six years. She was six years old at the time. Well, she might have watched it at someone else's house. And put Daniel, she didn't say she watched it at that house. She was very descriptive. Well, I you don't know. You watched it at your house, and you showed it to her, and you held her down. You just confirmed that you watched movies in your room together with her by herself. There was that one time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If this just happened one time, that doesn't sound like it makes you a bad person. But there was if no he did holding time, her down. There was nothing, anything like that. Okay. So, so you watched the movie. Yeah. If okay. It, the adult movie. It was an adult women having engaged in sex. Okay? Let's get that straight. Okay? That's where you need to start telling us the truth. Okay? At least give us that much, Daniel. At least be honest that much with us that it was an adult movie that you watched. Okay? She's not going to make that up. Okay? I don't remember. She's not making it up. Well, I don't, I don't remember any. Honestly, I do not remember any adult Just movie. possibly you could have been watching an adult movie. If you want to say I that. don't want to say nothing. I don't want tell to tell the truth. I want you to tell me. I'm telling you, I don't remember watching an adult movie with her. Well, she does remember. Uh, she and I don't even know why theory. I would want to watch an adult movie with someone that little. Maybe that's something to do with the house playing game, the boyfriend girlfriend game. Is that but, right? Yeah. Can you turn that off? Listen, it's because it happened. And that, that's it's as plain and simple as that. Okay? She's not going to sit there and make up specific details and tell us something unless it, unless it happened. And we know that happened. And you know in your part that happened. And you know that that probably wasn't the best judgment call. Would you agree? I would agree that it probably would have been bad. It's obviously... Probably would have been better just to watch a kid move. It would probably have been better for me not to be alone with someone else's daughter. Right, right. I don't even know why. He would let you take her to your house. Right, why yeah. anybody, you know, I... So he was a bad dad. I mean, he flat out told me he was a dad. Bad well, dad. from what I know is mostly hearsay. I don't know the guy well enough to make personal assumptions about the guy. Just that from what I've seen on the markings of the other Sarah. So she's at your house and maybe she's looking for attention. She's looking for love. You said okay. she wanted to play boyfriend, girl, girlfriend. So she's looking for some kind of love, some affection that her dad's not giving her. Right. He's a bad dad. I'm going to tell you, he's a bad dude. Okay? And you're not a bad dude. Okay? You're just a guy that made a mistake. And I want you to be honest with me, Daniel. Okay? We know you watched the adult porn. Okay, and we know you had inappropriate contact. It was more than just a kiss. Okay, so let's get this out. You've been carrying this around for ten years, Daniel. Ten years, and so was she. Yeah, we, did, we did these kind of interviews all the time. We we see that as hurting you. You you don't want to be here. We don't want to be here dealing with this. But it's time to get it off the chest and make make it right. Make it right for her. Because you can't sit here and tell the right to us. watching adult movies. For them. But you did. And and you, I don't believe that you don't remember. I understand your concern. You're afraid. But now's the time to start talking about it. Because if you walk out here, you know how everyone else is going to view you. You need to tell us why. We need to understand. Help us understand. I'm trying. What is? But you're leaving out details, Daniel. Okay, you're leaving out details. She was very descriptive. Okay. Whether you were trying to show her love, whatever happened, the mistake you made, now's the time to make it right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that if heaven forbid this gets out or whatever, or her story gets out, your neighbors don't look at you, oh, there's the monster, there's the rapist, there's the child molester. 
We all live with that. So be honest with us. They're going to look at a guy that just screwed up. He screwed up once. He made a mistake. Well, first of all, people aren't nice like that. You do. Well, people aren't perfect either. That's right. People make mistakes. But I don't know. What did you think would come about showing her pornography? I Were you just trying to be the... What would happen? Would you agree that it happened? No. No? I don't know why she would say that. I don't. She don't say that because it happened, Daniel. Okay? She's a, she was six years old at the time. She's ten. She was able to tell us that you took her in the back better, that you had the TV on, that you showed her the adult pornography. She was able to tell us that. She was able to pick you positively out of a photo lineup that's the guy that did that to me. I don't remember his name, but that's the guy. Okay? Well, just like I was able to recognize Carlos from the picture, but doesn't mean I recognize, remember... Oh, but it, it wasn't just that she recognized you. No. No. That's the man that stuck his penis inside me. That's what she yeah. said. Yeah. That that's, does not happen. That's what she's saying. Okay? And that's what she's going to testify to. Okay? So you can either keep sticking to your story and let us believe that you are that type of guy. You're that type of guy that needs to be locked up for many, many years. Or you can be the guy that says, I made a mistake. And that I can go to her and say, you know what? Just like you're sorry it happened, Daniel's sorry it happened. And you know what? I can go to the district attorney's office and say, you know what? Daniel admitted his wrongdoing. He's sorry that it happened. Or, or you can stick to your guns, and I can say, you know what? He's that mean, despicable person that you described him as. The man that likes to do that to little kids. And he doesn't have any remorse. He has no remorse whatsoever for doing what he did. How's that going to look in the eyes of the judge, and the jury? You're not going to have a chance to tell your story after this. You're going to be labeled as that guy. That monster of a guy. You are. Dead. Don't shake your head no because it's going to happen. You said you know how the public is. They're not that nice. You're right. And they're not even going to be But if you, have, if you have us on your side to be able to tell that story, it's a lot different. Well, I'm telling you. You're not. What I remember. You need to stop brushing it to the side now. Because it's serious. And you understand that. And that's why you're concerned. That's why you're worried. People in your shoes don't want to tell it. But when they tell us what happened, it makes them feel a whole lot better and they can move on with their lives as well. And this sick thing that happened is it's going to be trapped inside of you forever. But if you're saying, I just screwed up one day because I thought we were playing boyfriend, girlfriend, and, and I, I made a big mistake, that doesn't make you a sick person. And it wasn't even my idea made, to play that and well, you, so you really okay. so, all right, so, so tell us then it wasn't your idea if it happened okay that's what but we want to know it didn't escalate to body parts then what did it escalate to sure as hell didn't amount to that then what did it do tell us this is your time. This is your chance to get it out of what happened. If she might have sat on me at one time. Okay. When I, like I might have been laying straight back. On your back? Yeah. Okay. But I was fully sit? clothed. She okay. was fully okay. clothed. Okay. Uh, Where did she sit? Let's see, when you go into the bedroom, like, the doors here and the bed would be here and then you got like a closet over there. But I can't remember where the where the laptop was at. It. But if she sat on I think I remember her sitting on my sitting on me. Cause she was trying and that's when she tried to kiss me. Okay. But but that's as far as... Okay, so let me ask you this. Is there a chance you could have got aroused from that? Dear God, no. 
you have to understand, it doesn't matter if it's a six-year-old, 16, or a 26-year-old. If, if, if another girl sometimes is sitting on another guy and tries to kiss him, it can make him aroused. Maybe that's what she's confusing. Uh, what were you wearing at that? Well, I always wear pants because if I expose my legs to the sun, I'll get a rash. Uh, unless I wear a lot of sunblock, but typically I wear pants. Um, what was she wearing? Honestly, don't remember what she was wearing anymore. Maybe a white shirt. And where did you touch her when she tried to kiss you? Did you have her, your arms around her? No. I think I maybe like on the shoulder. Okay. Did you touch her breast? No. So you were you on her shoulders. Why don't we get back to, she had a white top on, what did you say she was wearing? What else did she have on? That's She was the kind of girl who wore skirts. Mm -hmm. It's possible you said shorts on? I don't know. Uh, so you held her by, you said you hold her by her arms. How were you holding her by her arms when she was trying to kiss Well, if she tried to kiss me, I'd be like that because the uh, last thing I want to do is leave a mark on somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get on the bed? Uh, take me back to that, how you lay down on the bed. Well, typically when I'm watching a movie in the bed, I'm laying on my back. I usually don't sit Indian style because that hunched over hurting okay. my back. And where's the TV? Is it in front of you, to your side? I'm trying to remember where. See, we move the bed around a lot and move back in those days, trying to re-erase it. Now let's think about this particular incident. Gee. Uh, well, that back room was always cold in the winter time. Uh, poorly insulated or something. Really dinky uh, closet. And we had the bed took up most of the floor space. I think there might have been like a a nice stand on the on the one side of the on the right side of the bed. Like staying at the foot. I think there might have been a night stand where the laptop might have been kept from time to time. But. So is the TV down at your feet? That end? No, it would have been. The laptop would have either been sitting on, on my lap or would have been sitting on the uh, nightstand on the. I guess, well, when you're facing the foot of the bed towards the head. So I guess if I'm laying on the bed. It would be on my left side. So you say it's a computer, not a TV, but just stream off. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. We didn't have a TV in that back room. So she, so it's next to you, but she's sitting on top of you. Are you completely just, on your back? But she wasn't on me for like any length of time. Okay. Because it's well, how'd she get up on top of you? I was laying on the bed. She climbed up the top of me and tried doing that all of a sudden. And I'm like, no. So, at this point, you want us to believe that a 60-year-old girl wants to play house, and she wants to sit on your lap, and she wants to kiss you, <clears throat> and she's sex. Dan, you're not being honest with us, okay? I'm seeing through the lies, Detective Kaylee's seeing through the lies, and the judge and jury's going to see through the lies. Well, I'm telling you what happened. That's, That's not what happened. happened. That's not Something more happened. happened. And you're not telling us why. Why aren't you telling us? 
What are you afraid of? I'm telling you what happened. That's not what happened. Why would you lay on a bed with a six-year-old? Uh, like that? Something I like that. did. Because the, the bed is pretty much like our second couch in our in our apartment. Well, why would you be back there alone with her? Because why would I be alone with her in the house in the first place? That's what we're yeah, but that's that's some reason I got stuck babysitting yeah, this kid. But you're alone with her, so why would you take her back to your bedroom? You don't want to be in that position as it is, so why would you take her back to your bedroom? Okay, because you made a mistake, right? Did you fuck up? Caroline. Okay, you did. Why aren't you telling us that then? Well, I'm telling you what happened as I remember it. As I'm trying to remember it. You keep trying to remember it because something more happened there that day. And we're trying to figure out why. We already know it happened. Don't sit here and tell us it didn't happen. Well, I don't remember what she remembered happening. We just what told you. I just told you what she remembered happening. Why well, would she say everything that you said to this point minus you penetrating her? Why would she say exactly what you said up until this point? Because now you're starting to give us stories spot on. Yeah. And you're giving us parts of the truth. She remembers at six years old. Ten years later, she remembers. Daniel's the only one that only remembers little bits and pieces, but the little bits and pieces that Daniel was telling us is lining up with what she's saying. Six years old. So who's a judge and jury going to believe? A six-year-old that ha that this happened to ten years ago she remembers verbatim? Or are you, all these years later, and you're going to tell bits and pieces of the story? Well, let me tell you something, Daniel. You're not going to remember specific things that happened on a specific day ten years ago unless there was something significant that happened. And there was. Well, that's why I don't remember. You do. You're able to tell us where the laptop because was, where your TV's at. You're able to tell us what she was wearing. You're able to tell us what you were wearing. Because I haven't thought about tell this in almost so a decade. So why are you telling us what you remember something? The remaining facts are. I haven't. What are you concerned about, Daniel? What are you worried about? I shouldn't have anything to worry about. Okay, then tell us what happened. Told you what I, us. I don't remember any more detail than that. You said I can't you remember two conversations ago. You said you didn't remember anything. And now you slowly remember what she's wearing. You slowly remember that you were in the back. You slowly remember that she tried to kiss you. You slowly remember that she sat on top of you. Well, you well yeah, that's more not a desire Daniel, each time you're giving us a different piece. Well, yeah, you because put all something the pieces together. together. Remember, and I don't know exactly. how long. And then, yeah, it's okay. not, I'm not comfortable with that level of closeness with someone who isn't my girlfriend or my wife. That she wasn't comfortable either. And, and that's what she all that tells me. Well, that she could have fooled me the way she climbed up on me that day. And all that tells me is that this is just a mistake then. Would you agree? I uh, Yes, I would agree that this is a mistake. Because because if you were comfortable with it, that would make you sick. If I was comfortable with it, do you think over ten years that would really fuck you up, wouldn't it? Yeah. So so it was just a mistake. What happened? To tell us that day, we're not here to condemn you. We're not here to call you a monster. We're here to get this behind you, so you can move on with your life, and she can move on with hers. Mm -hmm. To tell us the truth, Daniel. You want to tell us the truth. It's been bothering you since you sat down here. I can tell you that right now. It started bothering you when you saw me walk up to your front door and you answered the door. That's when you started. It started flooding your mind back. Why did you do it, Daniel? Ah, uh, you just nothing like that happened. I don't. Right. Know and you're why. willing to take a lie detector right now about it? Yes. All right. Ready to go? Yeah, you ready to go? Yeah. Right, so you're ready. Right, you're ready.
you Mr. Hodge? Yep. Do you, what do you prefer I call you, sir? Mr. Hodge, Daniel, whatever you want. It's my understanding you don't care for the name Danny, is that accurate? Uh, that's my wife's preference. That you call, or that she calls you that, or that she, that you don't be called that? That I don't be called that. Um, yeah, no, no. Well, not. Don't worry. What would you prefer I call you, Daniel or Mr. Hodge? Yeah, that's fine. Alright, it's my understanding the other detectives have been speaking with you. Did they, they explain to you what we were going to do here? Something about a lie detector test. I'm just kind of curious. Like, mm -hmm. Alright, they told me a lot of facts that I wasn't familiar with, so okay. how's that going to affect the outcome of the test? I remember what they told me and remembering what they think. Well, Here's what I'll explain to you. Here's how this works. This device, okay, and this is a little different than a polygraph. If you've ever heard of a polygraph test, those were uh, based on monitoring like blood pressure and stuff like that. What this does, it's a computer that monitors actually the frequencies, like if you ever heard of AM, FM on a stereo. That has to do with wavelengths and patterns and things. The only time, and without getting into all the technical bullshit kind of details, the only time this would indicate that you're being untruthful is if you're telling a known lie. So in other words, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. It's going to be about 10 questions, okay? Some are going to be like, is your name Dan? Okay. <laughs> you know, obviously that, that, that's accurate. Right. On um, one question, I'm going to afford, I, I, I'll explain it better at the time, but I'm actually going to tell you to lie to me. It's going to be something like, am I wearing a watch? And you're going to say no. Okay, so that way we can measure what it looks like um, when you're saying something that, that isn't factual. But, and I was going to talk to you a little bit more. It's my understanding there's an allegation of a sexual assault here. Apparently. Okay. It's also my understanding that you're denying, you know, assaulting the, the, the child that, that, that we're talking about. Her name was Sasha. Um, Provided you're telling the truth, there won't be an issue. There's no way you can fake it. That's one of the reasons we've gone with this as opposed to the things that deal with blood pressure and stuff. Because people get nervous. People get upset when you're sitting across the table from a cop who's asking you questions. They're automatically going to make you stressed out in the first place. I don't think blood pressure is the most accurate way. Or heart rate, respiratory rate. Those are the things that polygraph monitors. What this does is only responds if you are definitely lying. Okay, so in other words, if nothing happened between you and this young girl, okay, and we're going to ask two very specific questions. That's all it's really going to be. It's two, a total of ten questions, but only two of them relating to the issue. Okay, if you tell a lie, we'll know. I don't know it, but in the same way, if nothing happened and that's factual, okay, then that that this will this is an opportunity to also more or less clear your name. Okay, because something has been alleged against you, as you know. And uh, what we want to do is find out if it's important. We're, we're going to talk just a little bit ahead of time. I don't know how long you've been down here. I know that they've been with you. Okay. I know you're probably pretty well talked down. But in the same way, I don't know anything about this other than just some very basic stuff. I'm not involved in this investigation. I don't know the details. I don't know. I, I know that at some point in time, I believe you lived on Dewey Street. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yes. And I know that that's supposedly uh, when this was alleged to have happened. I also believe this is supposed to have happened years ago, like 10 years ago. Is that Something accurate? Like that. I guess the longest part of this process is going to be me setting up this machine. Another thing that's nice about these devices. If you remember, or if you've ever seen on television or something, the, the polygraph machine, it was almost, it reminds you of like an electric chair or something, they had shit wrapped all over you. All it's going to be is this little microphone that's going to clip to the collar of your shirt. All right. That's all it's going to be, but it's not like we tie you down or anything along those lines. Now, will my general anxiety affect any of that? Because no. no, that's a lot of that. We're gonna we're gonna do some some voice samples and things like that that will show a baseline on you. Okay. So if you have, do you take medication for anxiety? No. Okay. But you, have you ever had a doctor or somebody tell you you have anxiety? Yeah, I was on medicine for a while and rectal bleeding and then some other issues. 
where it just wasn't doing anything. It's not going to um, No, there, that's not going to be an issue. Really, the only thing that would be an issue is if I said, did this happen? And you said, no, it didn't, when really it didn't. That's, a, that's the only only thing that can can cause any reaction. And it's something that, uh, you know, as we're sitting here doing it, I don't necessarily know as I'm looking at it. I have to go back and look at things. Basically, this captures wavelengths. Uh, it, it, it captures and, and I'll show you actually what it looks like and I have to go be able to go back through and do both things. Mr. Hobbs, what's your date of birth? 12, 17, 82. Your first name's Daniel? Yes.
worked at Walmart, so I'd really couldn't afford too much. So I think every night, every couple months, I would go out and buy a bottle of liquor and spend my weekend that way. Sure. But that's about as far as I would go with that. I'm trying to think of anything that would have clouded, potentially could have clouded your judgment. Because mm -hmm. the more I'm able to know, the more direct I'm able to answer your, or I should say answer the question, but the more directly I'll be able to target the questions. And having said that, if there's something that happened that you are kind of cloudy about, or you might have been drinking or something like that, or your wife had crushed up a pill when you snorted or something, would trust me, it, I'm not yeah. a, the only I want to make sure that, here's what I want to make sure of, just so you know, Dan. <laughs> I don't want to see you not pass this test. Right. Okay. I promise you that. I, I want to see you pass because what the allegation is, is something that th 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 this is pretty bad. vulgar. Um, in the same light, I also recognize that you now, is, what, 33, 34 years old? Yeah. Are a different person than you were tw at 24. If something did happen, mm -hmm. I don't want to learn from it by saying, having to say you can you know, tell the truth. Man. And if something did happen, but it's just sudden, it's sort of foggy to you, but like it's always kind of weighed on your mind, and especially as you got older, you think, I think I might have gone across the line and touched her or something like that. Mm -hmm and it's always bothered you, this this would be the appropriate time to let me know what's going on so we don't someday have to sit here and say, Daniel, you feel the test. Right. I honestly don't remember how she came over to the house anymore. If, if I got stuck babysitting or if she just came over, I honestly don't remember how what, what happened for her to want to come over to my house in the first place. I don't remember if I was drinking that weekend or not. I might have been, but no. It, it, I don't remember specifics other than what I conversed with the two officers. Just and I didn't hear that. I don't know what you told them. And you know, that's from me just trying to go over it and over it again in my mind, trying to see what happened, trying to remember what specifically happened ten years ago. Do you remember if you showed her pornography or if you were no, in porn? I don't remember showing her pornography. I don't see as that's something I would do. I don't understand why I would want to show pornography to someone that young. Is it possible porn was on or something when she was over and she saw it? Here's the other part of I don't the know. allegations aren't something kid, somebody just comes up with. So there may be something that's clouding her memory, but she remembers things, kind of like what I was saying with you. Right. That's what I'm trying to figure out where some of these things are, and if there are things I need to ask you as we do this test. I honestly do not remember porn I could feel. Like, we had a, t our main living room was in the front, front of the, front of the apartment. Everything was on the first floor. Uh, we had two rooms in the front, the kitchen, and then my, me and my girlfriend, um, bedroom was in the back, and she had a laptop that we watched DVDs or streams. Uh, we had the STARS program through Verizon at that time. I gotcha. Uh, you know, with her being, because I think we, we even got the laptop just because she was laid up for so long from breaking her ankle. I think that was, I can't remember if that was the year she broke her ankle or not anymore. Well, it may have been around the time that she was buying pills. Right, because so yeah, so be that's the reason that. why she was even buying the pills in the first place, was just trying to, she's just, she's just so mean when it comes to pain, whether it's pain or pain, pain. Yeah, my wife, she's a weenie when it comes to pain, and... Well, one thing I think is maybe if she's funny about that, with the discomfort your wife was in, she might not have been feeling as sexual as she normally used to or normally does. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you had porn or something like that, just to kind of 
and help you through dry spells, if you know what I mean. I'm not saying you showed it, I'm just saying maybe that it's, maybe I, I, you I had this it. weird sex drive where, honestly, I don't really, like, I might have, like, a few fleeting moments, but I honestly don't masturbate more than once every two weeks at the most. I got you, man. It's just, I don't know. I was just, like, like the other day, uh, I was bored, couldn't find nothing to watch, and start watching porn. And then I just got bored because I couldn't find anything I was getting into. Then a couple of hours later, I mean, I don't even, I'm watching this porn, and I'm not even feeling around. And yeah, then, I like, a couple you. hours later, I get blue balls. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with me? I got you, man. I mean, it's just like I wasn't even around, so I was getting bored of it. I still get the blue balls from it. There, there's absolutely, and just so you know, there's absolutely nothing you could tell me that would even make me think differently of you, dude. And, and I trust me, I understand what you're saying there. And what I'm trying to figure out is just, I want to make sure it actually, you seem like a decent dude, it's kind of important. I, I want to see you not deceive anything. Uh, Let me ask you this. Is there a possibility when she was over that you touched her in a way or she touched you? About the worst thing I remember was her climbing on top of me, sitting on me, because I was laying on the bed. Mm -hmm. that I, and then her trying to kiss me because she wanted to play boyfriend-girlfriend or something. And me stopping her with my hands on her shoulders. You know, a girl that age, and women, I don't know if you know this, girls go through puberty a lot earlier than men, okay? To the point that, like, a lot of guys, they say it's like that, 13, you know, they always kind of associate with, like, 13 years old, you know, it's, for a dude, it's probably, like, 12 to 14 or 15, mm -hmm. all right? Um, some dudes earlier, some dudes later. Some dudes it takes like that whole term, the whole whole term. Like I never saw this girl and girl hair on my dick. You know what I mean? It's like uh -huh. man, something's not right with me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, for the longest time, girls start going through and start having like this hormonal things and and, and questions about sexuality at a younger age. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I've even heard from like eight to twelve, almost like a four year difference earlier than guys. Yeah, and my so daughter's 14, and she's had her monthly for at least two years now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it seems like it's like generations move on. It I happens mean, earlier. I wonder if the, uh, the hormones and cows and milk has anything to do with that. You know, that's a very good question. There's a lot of research out there that's saying, yeah, definitely. Or They're saying. They're saying that the hormones and a lot of shit, and then but milk especially, right. is but fucking up kids. But then there's also, you know, the curse on the earth, so that doesn't happen. I don't know, the curse on the earth? Well, I follow find the Bible. All right. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, sure. After the sin in the Garden of Eden, it's cursed earth. Gotcha, I'm sorry, I misunderstood where you were coming from. I, I was... I was Catholic, so like my favorite book was Revelations, which is when all the crazy shit went down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, um, no, I understand. Well, I was, well, yeah, you they were good. describing some of that craziness even in the book of Daniel. I was recently reading um, a book called God Quiet the Nations, and there was this chapter where Daniel was describing uh, Nebuchadnezzar's vision mm -hmm. about the statue and. and how the statue is literally a timeline from head to toe, where it starts off with the golden head and then works its way down to the toes that are a mirror of clay and iron, and talking about how that's supposed to represent nations towards the end time being under one flag, like something like that. But then the book just got kind of confusing, so I switched to another one. <laughs> But, you know, one thing that's interesting, and, and though I was just the one saying it seems like it's earlier and earlier, if you remember, if you follow scripture, biblically, you used to see women getting married at nine and ten years old, according to the word of the, the, the Bible and the books. Now, there are a lot of people who say the years are different and stuff like that, Yeah. but, um, but then you know, you also saw 
younger women bearing children at a very young age. Yeah, and to me that's just kind of crazy to, because that's also coming from the time where women were were like livestock. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of the wedding traditions that we have these days go back to women being bartered, you know, for, you know, like, I'd give you so much if, you know, for your daughter, like, you know, I forget what the word is for that, but, you know. There's still people that believe in bartering their children. Yeah, I, I especially in some of these other countries, and I imagine even probably in America, some summers, um, but you as a father, you wouldn't do that to your job, dear God. I mean, I could you ever understand somebody doing that? No, I, I just don't get. It. I understand that people are going to have questionable desires in life, mm -hmm. whether it's homosexuality or it's something like. We were actually talking about something like this this morning with with my daughter, uh, homosexuality and something else. I forget what it was, but the, the whole argument we made with my daughter was like it's having these urges, but at the same time recognizing the wrong in those urges and not falling through. Because we're all born into sin mm -hmm. and we're all going to have some kind of desire to do some sort of wrong whether it's something sick and nasty or whether it's something like stealing candy bar from Walmart they're all that's the same in the yes more of, sadly but yeah but a lot of people don't understand that but yes that's true I mean sin sin and it's just a matter of Realizing that it's normal to feel a certain way, but it's another thing to act on that. Well, that's the thing. But I don't know, Daniel, sometimes there are times when we, well, we all sin and we do act on things mm -hmm. that we shouldn't act on. Oh, yeah. uh, do you well, believe God's a forgiving God? Oh, yes. I, I mean, I've learned from... Like, my personal experience with, like, alcohol, like, uh, I went to a fourth year live party with a co-worker, and there were several other people there, but apparently, the next morning, I wake up in the grass, had too much to drink, and apparently, I'm flirting with an older woman. Gotcha. And it's just, like, and I think there was another time where, uh, and then... I think there might have been another time where there was something like that where I ended up flirting with an older woman. And it's just like, after two experiences like that, I just like, you know what? I'm going to leave my drinking at home. If I'm going to act weird when I don't want to be influenced, stay at home and drink. And Do you remember flirting with a woman or just sort of, but you don't remember I'm everything? I'm kind of a wallflower by nature. I got you. Um, when we were talking earlier about with Sasha, and I don't, I've never seen Sasha, and I, I don't know what she looked like, you know, years ago. And did it arouse you at all when she was on you? No. Did you go any further than just kind of pushing her away? I mean, did you kiss back at all? No. Did you touch her anywhere? As far as the shoulders, no. No, I mean in her vagina. Dear God, no. Did she do anything to you? Did she touch your penis? I don't remember. I don't think so. I think I would remember that, but no. And, and I guess maybe I need to be clear, because this is how I'm going to determine that question. You don't remember if she touched it with her hand? I no, I think I would remember something like that. 
is it possible she was grinding against you, like with her hips, if she was up on top of you like that? If she was moving around, I can see how it would seem like it would be grinding, but I don't remember that. Were you undressed? No. Was she undressed? No. I, I have to ask you, did your penis penetrate her? No. You're sure of this? Yes. There's not a possibility that she slipped or slid down or anything like that? Dear God, no. Okay. You're absolutely confident in that? Yes. And, and that's, that's what I hope happened. I understand that. I, I just wanted to... I, I guess it's one of those things that... I understand I've been doing this for a long time. It's still something I don't want to directly ask you. I, I mean, I just, I, I don't want to think of it. I, I don't want to have to ask you, Daniel, if this happened. But I just need to know because those types of things have happened before. And it sounds like from what you're explaining, you have a pretty good amount of self-control. Yes. Was she a girl that you don't know? Do you think she had a lot of self-control? I mean, you knew her growing up. Does she seem like somebody that maybe didn't have the best influence by her parents? I would definitely say that I, from what I remember, yeah, excuse me, what I remember is that, you know, it wasn't a wholesome household from what I remember. I thought I heard, uh, I might be mistaken, but I thought I heard a rumor about her seeing her dad and stepmom having sex, but I'm not sure if it does something.
give me one second, Daniel. Uh, I'm going to get you a water and a cone. Okay, it's like a little cone of water. Uh, clear this out. We'll get this done with so you can get on. All right. Based off of the conversation we had, I think what the two questions that we'll do are, did you, and I want to make sure I'm telling you this ahead of time in case you think, hey, I don't know if I want to go there because I'll say that possibly enough. I was going to ask you, did you show pornography to Sasha? No. No. You did not. No. Or, or you don't know if you did because there's a difference. If it's possible you did, I'll ask you a different question. I honestly don't believe that would be possible. Okay. And then I'm asked if your penis touched Sasha. To God, no. Okay. In a sexual way. When I say that, it's, it's implying a sexual way. Right. Like, did your did your penis uh, enter Sasha? That would even be better because I don't want you thinking, well, she was sitting on my lap. Technically, it's kind of like there. Did your penis enter Sasha? No. All right, so those are going to be the two questions we ask. Maybe if you could 
bring it up just a little bit so it's closer here. I'll get that cord. What I want you to do, and this is going to take a couple minutes since we just fired it up and everything, I need to basically make it start capturing the microphone. When I point to you, I want you to say yes, okay? Just yes. Don't say yes, I hear you or anything like that. Just yes or no. Everything that we do is going to be yes or no, okay? All right. So, yes.
and even though you consider this area West York, this is still technically a York address. So if I ask you, are we in the city of York, just say yes. Okay. I, I, if that makes you uncomfortable, I'll rephrase it. Are we in the borough of West? In fact, we'll do that so there's no chance. Yeah, I've been told I'm a little analytical, yeah. and that's been known to drive people nuts. Yeah, well, I'm the same way, and that's if I was sitting there, I would be thinking, well, I'm technically not in the city of York, I'm technically in West York borough. So uh, I'll tell you here when uh, it just becomes a prize for my parents, but I'm still concerned. There, as I told you before, Daniel, there are going to be two questions, and, and I'm going to go through them all with you, but there are going to be two questions where I ask you to tell an intentional lie. The first one was, is the color of the wall blue? And you're going to say yes, even though we both see it's not. The second one is going to be this. First of all, let me make sure you have a driver's license, correct? No. Have you ever had a driver's license? No. You've never driven a car? No, uh, I've driven a car. Okay, then how about we do this? Have you ever driven? I just never got my license. I just like riding my bike better. I understand. Trust me, this is. And, and understand, this is a, one of those questions where I want I I anticipate I want you to not tell the truth. What I'm going to say is, have you ever driven without a license? And even though you just acknowledge you have, and I know damn well at some point in your 34 years you have, I want you to say no. Okay. Okay. Normally the question is, have you ever driven over the posted speed limit? And everybody's driven over the posted speed limit. But since you technically don't have a license, there's technically a possibility you haven't driven over the posted speed limit if you just pulled the car down a block or something. So what I'll say is, have you ever driven without a license? say no. And, then, and, and in fact, I'll just go through the questions now with you. The first one is going to be, is your name Daniel? Yes. The second is going to be, is the color of the wall blue? Yes. Is today Monday? Yes. The fourth question will be, did you show Sasha pornography? No. The fifth question is, is this the month of July? Yes. The sixth question will be, did your penis enter Sasha? No. The seventh question is, are we in the borough of West York? Yes. Then there's, have you ever driven without a license? Yes. Well, no. Oh. That, okay. that one lie and say oh. no. Okay, I got I was, trying, I was thinking as you were telling me, like, yeah. I'm like trying to remember, like, is that the one I'm supposed to lie or I'm supposed to tell yeah, the truth? No. The, the, the one with the blue wall. You're right, remember right. that. And then, without, have you ever driven without a license? Say no. But I, I know you have, and you know you have. And then the final question I'll ask is, and, and I want you to see that I am. It, it'll be, am I wearing a watch? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. So. That's all that is. 
So if I say, am I wearing a watch? And you say yes. I say, am I wearing a watch? And you say yes. I say, am I wearing a watch? And you say yes. So kind of like the doctor's office where you yeah. repeat the same story to every level of person. Exactly. No, it's just, it's not, it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's not that there's anything strange. What it, it's telling you, what it, what it means is I'm not seeing anything, and that's why I have you repeat it. So having said that, it's going to be those kind of questions, man. All right. You ready? Uh, yes, so. That's right. As I can be. Is your name Daniel? Yes. Is the color of the wall blue? Yes. That's one of those. Is the color of the wall blue? Yes. Is today Monday? Yes. Sasha pornography. No. Is this the month of July? Yes. Did your penis enter Sasha? No. Are we in the borough of West York? Yes. Have you ever driven without a license? No. Am I wearing a watch? Yes. Is that one of the salon? No. No, I, I really am wearing a watch. I feel like I'm. I'm the thing at the circus, people are poking to get two tricks. <laughs> Am I saying it right? Now, and here's the thing, I want to explain something to you. That wasn't so bad, was it? Pretty straightforward and easy. There's a thing called situational stress, okay? Just like you identified before, you have anxiety. This is a very unusual circumstance you're in right now. And so what we do, and I don't tell you this when we first started, um, I don't tell you when we, we started this, is I'm actually going to do that again. And we're going to do the test one more time. And what happens is, by going through that the first time, any nerves, any weirdness and inflection in your tone or anything is kind of expelled. So it's the second test we do, which is the one that, that, that I'll assess and analyze. This is the last test we did I won't even look at. Okay. okay. So we're going to start the test over. Um, and we're going to run through it again, and then after that I'll be done. Okay. All right. So, make sure everything's good. Were you comfortable with that? Uh, yes, so. Are we 
in the borough of West York? Yes. Have you ever driven without a license? No. Have you ever driven without a license? No. Have you ever driven without a license? No.
strawberry or lemon, or do you want those of the uh, strawberries? Um, like I say, this guy's will be here with me just a second, dude. And, uh, and, uh, and it was a pleasure making your appointments, man. Seriously. Aside from looking like Dave Navarro. Hey, I, I, did he look, did anybody ever tell you that? You like you look like Dave Navarro. He's a, he's a, a musician. Oh, okay, I've been told. No, I didn't look like someone. I think someone told me I was like the big singer from Creed. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no. Uh, Dave Navarro used to, he was a guitarist, but it was a band called James Addiction. And uh, then um, actually, uh, th there's another singer. You, you, you look like a singer, so hey, All right. good luck to you, man. Thank okay. You. And just, again, I want you to make sure that you, uh, uh, sounds like you have some really deep beliefs, and, and sometimes uh, it takes challenge and things like that to come through through on the other side eventually, but we got to work through things. I'm going to go take a look at your test, okay, man? All right. So bad was it, Daniel? Yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, we were uh, hearing some of what was being said, and I know you're a religious man. Are you Catholic or? Um, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, but uh, due to my charismatic Pentecostal or? Uh, yeah, they were a little charismatic, but I've kind of shied away to that and more of at home study. Now do send my daughter to. Baptist Church on Sunday, but uh, um, I read a lot. Of, I've been so trying to pick up the habit of reading a few religious books over, um, over the past couple months. Uh, I inherit a, my father-in-law reads a lot of them. So I inherit his. I said, "What you start reading from what some of the stuff he gave you? Mm -hmm. What's it? What are some of the books on like end times and things like that?" Or what? Um, uh, there's a book about. Uh, there's an interesting book about the uh, the thief on the cross mm -hmm. and kind of from his point of view. Uh, the thief on the cross? Yeah. Uh, reading um, between that and a book called God, Divine, and the Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was another one, uh, One Blood, that kind of talks about racism. So what was the, uh, the book on the thief on the cross about? What was the, the point of the, the book? Um, basically, you kind of talk about, I'm not sure, I didn't get a chance to talk to my father a lot of because he always studies, you know, double check checks everything. Mm -hmm. But um, basically, let's tell a story about how from little enough to sleep on the cross, how the Romans invaded his country and, you know, led to his lifetime of sin and crime. But then, at the end, he realized he was getting 
what he deserved, you know, punished like this. Whereas a man like Jesus being punished like that didn't seem right. Mm-hmm. And how he had this epiphany, this realization uh, amongst all the hollering, screaming, and the slurs going on aimed at Jesus, and how he came to accept Jesus and believe in him, and whereas, and you talk about the contrast of someone like Jesus' mother, who's had a lifetime of living a certain way, and him, and then even at the end, you know, he's still able to meet Jesus at the gates. Right, because he admitted what he was doing was wrong. He realized the life right. that he was living was wrong. He accepted Christ as his Savior, knowing that he believed what Christ told him, that he was right. dying on that cross for his salvation, and he accepted that. Because up until then, you had to sacrifice bulls and goats and things like that for your sin because there was no atonement for your sins. Right. So you God had took on your sins upon himself and he was on that cross so there would be no more sacrificial lambs and right. God was that sacrificial lamb right. so he, the he one died for sin yeah the one the man of God as it's been termed uh, were Jesus were both, both man and God at the mm-hmm. same time and Jesus was the one man who lived a life without sin. sin so he could be that flawless lamb sacrifice. of sacrifice so he also he also knew what we would face as men, mm-hmm. and he knew that we would make mistakes, and that's why he did that for us, so we wouldn't have to sacrifice the bulls or go to the high priest and have them make the atonement for us for forgiveness of our sins, correct? Mm-hmm. So you would agree that if you did something wrong, God would want you to make it right. Exactly. Daniel, today you danced around a little bit with what you told us. First you said nothing happened. And then you said that she tried to kiss you. And then you said that she sat on top of you. And something else you told us, not necessarily in your words, was that you watched pornography with her. That you had sex with her. And you those words didn't come out of your mouth like that. But when you told us was when you sat in here with the other officer during the lie detector test. It showed that you were deceptive about those two questions. Okay. Daniel, this is the time to make it right and ask for forgiveness. I didn't do that. I don't understand why the test would. It didn't show deception on any other answer for those two. Daniel, listen to me. Okay? Because the thought of that is kind of offensive. No, that didn't show them that. I don't understand why. Because you failed, or it showed signs of deception. Because you weren't being truthful. But Daniel, now's the time to tell the truth. You Just like God truth. wants to forgive you and will forgive you, we forgive you. Daniel, this isn't the end of the world, man. Life's going to go on. You made a mistake. Yeah, and I believe people who make mistakes should own up to them. And that's what you need to do right now. Because we know this happened. Not only did she come and told us what happened, but now you you pretty much told us during the polygraph what happened, during the, during the lie detector. It's time, it's time to put it out there and tell us why. Because then even that thief on the cross know he was wrong. Mm-hmm. And he made right. Okay? You and I both know that if you would go out there tonight and be killed, be by by a car, whatever would happen, you weren't made right with God because you're sitting here lying to us and not accepting. I did not put any part of my body inside her. Did you watch pornography with her, Daniel? No. Did you watch pornography with her? No. Why are you? Why would she be saying this? Why would you be failing on that question? I wish I had an answer. We're not going to sit here and let you continue to lie to us about it. 
I don't know. You do have answers. You don't want to give us those answers. Are you a monster? Is that really what you are? Is that what you want to leave, letting us believe? So we can tell the district attorney's office? So we can tell a judge that? Look, you asked me a bunch of questions are you that I'm trying to remember. You're a sick monster. Okay. Is that That's okay to you? Is that what you want to go home to for your family to know? I'm not okay with that. Do you need help? Do you need to go get help because of what you did? I didn't do that to her. You did. You wouldn't be sitting here allowing us to tell you this if you didn't do it. Maybe. Why, why did you do it, Daniel? If I had something to hide, if I actually blood out of leave, I had something to hide, I'd probably walk out this door right now. But I didn't do this to this girl. I don't know why. Then let me ask you this, Daniel. Why initially did you say, nothing happened? Nothing happened. And then you start giving us a little bit of what she already told us happened. Okay? Yeah. But you weren't telling us the truth. Okay? She told us the truth. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're not telling us the truth. Because you had, had the opportunity to sit down and think about whatever she thought about no, before she, she didn't. You had all this opportunity to sit and talk to her. Because you know what? She had no idea what questions were going to be asked to her when she went to that forensic interview. She had no idea what they were going to ask her. None. She had plenty of time to come up her story. I she, don't had, she had less time than you did. And you took a six-year-old back in your bedroom when no one else was in the house and laid down on your bed and let her sit on top of you and try to kiss you? I That's stopped bullshit, her. That's bullshit, Daniel. Now stop the lies. Why did you do it? I did What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, Daniel? What's wrong with you? What is wrong with someone that's going to have sex with a six-year-old and let it, them just go on with their life would not bother them at all? You're okay with that? You're okay with living the rest of your life knowing what you did to her? I didn't do nothing to that. You child. did, Daniel. You're sitting here lying. You need to make it right with yourself. You can't sit here and continue to lie unless you have a problem. And if you have a problem, then we're going to go into the district attorney's office and tell them that. And we're going to ask them to put you behind bars as long as you can. Because you're sick. You're a monster. If you can do that to a six-year-old, what's your, what's your problem? What is wrong with you? How can you do that? You didn't just make a mistake. You're sick. Is that what's wrong with you? I can see it in your eyes. Disgust me. Daniel, look. And like I said, I'm a very religious man. And I have made mistakes. And I've taken my mistakes before God. More times than I care to admit. Okay? The Bible does say He's a forgiving God, correct? He's a loving God. His mercy is new every day. Correct? Just like God's going to forgive you if you ask Him to, we're going to forgive you, and I'm sure Sasha's going to forgive you. But you first have got to admit that you made a mistake. I told you I didn't do nothing. And that's not your sick. That's not your sick. And you need to get help. I don't know you. So why does your opinion matter? No, it's not just my opinion. It's everyone else's opinion that's going to be out there. Your family and your own daughter. Are you okay with your daughter knowing that about you? Well, I think my daughter's old enough to form her own opinion. You're okay with that? She's heard bullshit about me before from her mom. Listen, let everyone in your life believe that. Daniel, look, I don't want them to believe bullshit. I want them to believe that there was a man that made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I told you I'd be a few myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's a mistake that you made. Okay. Now's the time to just tell me the truth. Okay. So I can go back to Sasha and tell her that she made a mistake. And that you're sorry. Mm -hmm. Because people make mistakes. I don't want people to look at you all every day and you have this mark on your face like Esau did. You know, sort of what Esau? Sounds familiar. He was a marked man. 
everywhere he went, they knew that he killed his brother Jacob. Or I'm sorry, not Jacob. Um, uh, Cain and Abel. I'm sorry, I got that confused. He was marked. Cain was marked. You ever hear anybody give the name Cain? No, they don't use it anymore because he killed his brother. And his blood cried out to the ground. Remember that story? Okay. He never repented. He never made right. Here's your time to make right. I want to be able to go to Sasha. Let her know that you're a changed man. You're not that person you were before. So what happened after she crawled on top of Daniel? I don't, I don't want you to be labeled a monster. Okay? I don't want that for you. I don't want that for your daughter. Your daughter's 13, 14. She's got a couple more years in school. You want them to look at her and say, oh, her dad's one of us little kids. If not for her, Daniel, or if not for you, for her, do it for her because she's already been a victim, as you well said. She don't need to have that over her life for the rest of her life. Now's the time to come clean, Daniel. Let me help you, and I can't help you unless you let me help you. I wish I could give you the answers you want to hear. I want to hear the truth. I don't want to hear told nothing you the truth. No, he told me Why did you do it, Daniel? Why did you do it? He told me partial truth. I'll tell you what I remember. But you have a six-year-old that remembers more than you, Daniel. But here's the problem, Daniel. You took that lie detector test. It knows what you remember because it showed you lie. I don't know why it would. Because you're a pedophile. Because you're sick. I like old ladies, not children. You're a pedophile. You're a child molester. That's your problem. Do you really want that to be labeled the rest of your life, Daniel? That you were labeled as a child molester and a pedophile? I know you don't. Well, I think the way this is going, that's what you're going to stick me with. I'm not going to stick with I Daniel. I'm not going to stick you with anything. It's not regardless of what you said. Because you sit here and tell the truth, and you're going to walk out that door. I can Regardless sit here and what tell you, you say, whatever you're gonna story you want, there. you're still going to believe what you want to believe. No, Daniel, no. what I'm going to believe is factual based. Okay? We have a six year old girl that's going to stand and testify. She's going to point at you and say, That's the man that stuck his penis inside of me when I was six years old. That's the man that took me to the back room, which you already said you did. That's the man that showed me pornography. And then that's the man that stuck his penis inside me. And then you're going to take the stand and say, I don't remember what happened. I didn't do that. Although you sat here and said, nothing happened at the beginning, but then you admitted to taking her back in the room, you admitted to showing her a movie, you admitted to her, her trying to kiss you, and then her sitting on top of you. Daniel, come on, you're not that stupid. What do you think a jury's going to believe? Okay? Now's your time to show some repentance. Now's your time to say you were sorry. You made a mistake. So, why is it her, out of all the other kids who came in and out of that house that while we lived there, we had Becky... Because uh, she's the only one it happened to, Daniel. It was a mistake. You made a mistake that one time. Uh, I just because you took advantage it. of her home life. Mm -hmm. it doesn't make and it sense. does matter what you say. Because you walk out of here, and that's all we're going to think of it, is that you're a child molester. And that's what everyone else is going to think about it, that you're a child molester. And that you're a sick little pervert that likes to have sex with six-year-olds. That's all anyone's going to believe. Unless you sit here and tell us that you had something wrong with you that day, and you fucked up. Otherwise, you're just a nasty pedophile. You are disgusting. Damn, look, I'm trying to help you. For you and your daughter. I can't admit to something that I didn't do. I want you just to tell me the truth. And you're not telling me the truth. You took a voice stress analyst test. Mm -hmm. It showed that you deceived. You lied on those two questions. Okay? That's another thing. Another strike against you. You're going to have that guy come and testify in court. I asked him specifically, did his penis enter that child? And he said, no. It showed sign of deception, didn't it? Yes, it did. I also asked if he showed child porn or showed that child pornography, and he said no, and it showed deception that he did. Daniel, it's not looking good for you, man. I'm going to be honest with you; it is not looking good. And you can keep sitting here and denying and denying and denying, but we have a victim. 
six. She was six at the time. She's 16 now. Remember everything that happened to her. And she's going to say, that's the man that did it to me. And you're going to go to jail for a long time. And you're going to be labeled that guy, the one that has a problem with kids. Your daughter's going to go to school. It's going to be in the papers. You're going to be in Megan's Law. All your neighbors are going to look you up online and see what a sick individual you are. But most importantly, your daughter. There's another pedophile in the neighborhood. She's, you need to clear your name for her and tell the truth so that we can tell... So you want me to admit to something I did and that's just supposed to make everything... No, I don't want you to admit to nothing but the truth. That's what I want you to admit to. So what? I just tell you what you want to hear no, and I no, just go no, on what you did, and Daniel, like no, tell us what you did is what I want, Daniel. The truth of what you did. That's what I want. I don't want you to say something you didn't do. I don't want you to fabricate something you didn't what do. What you're telling me is that if I tell you what you want me I'm to telling say, you to tell me the truth that because everything's going to be honky took, dory. I get took, to go back to my life. Life. No, you, you know took what? A, a test that you showed signs of deception, Daniel. It showed that you were lying. That's what I'm saying. So I want you to tell me the truth because you were lying. It showed that you were lying. I just want you to tell me the truth. That's what I want. I don't know why the machine would show that. Because you lied. That's why it showed that. Mm -hmm. So tell me the truth, Daniel. The machine had trouble picking me up half the time. You were tilting your neck. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you were so nervous. You were so scared because you knew that you would have to lie about it. You saw what he... he I, I don't even know how to deal with you anymore. I didn't even you're know. really starting to piss me off. I didn't even you're know sitting here who was to lie and to, when you told me, you knew exactly who you were because uh, you've been thinking about her all the time for the last ten years. And I'm you sitting in the back of that car thinking, and to myself, thinking about who what the hell is your Carlos guy, and how the hell did I get mixed up? How you this raped a six-year-old? Mm -hmm. You told us I didn't know him. He told us he lived up the street from right. Him. But until you showed me his face, I didn't know who the hell he was. You're a child rapist. I can tell you all my neighbors I've known since I was a kid, and I know their names. And I'm a 48-year-old man. I'm a lot older than you. I know. I make it a point to keep to myself. I'm a wallflower by nature. Now, I've always you weren't back then. Not when you were fucking a six-year-old. Mm -hmm. Daniel, I don't know how much more I can ask you to tell you mm -hmm. that you need to be truthful because I'm going to call that little six-year-old. Well, she's not six. That 16-year-old girl to the stand, and she's going to say everything that happened to her. And she's going to say that she picked you out of a lineup of all men that look just like you, dark hair, down past her ears, okay? From 10 years ago, she remembered your face. She remembered you looked like. By the way, do you have any tattoos? Um, yeah. Where are they? Just the one. Just one on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. She's also going to testify about that. Sometimes I wear tank tops. And you know what else? We're going to get up there and testify that you have no remorse for what you did. That it wasn't a mistake. Because you sat here over and over and over and said, it's not a mistake. Because I didn't do anything. And we're going to tell the judge, and we're going to tell 12 people you on that jury that, that, that it was a mistake. The that what you did was right? pre-planned out because you are a sick child molester. You're a pedophile. And that's what we're going to tell the jury. And they're all going to hear how it wasn't a mistake and that you pre-planned this because you had her come over to your house when no one else was there. Sure you took the her back to the bedroom. You showed house her house. pornography and then you raped her. You raped a six-year-old and you have no remorse for it. It's just messed up, man. You're right. It is. And that's what I'm going to tell the jury. That you sat here and you said that it wasn't a mistake because you knew exactly what you were doing because you're sick. Here's the deal, Daniel. You made a conscious decision to take her to the back of that bedroom, to the back of that room where that bed was. Because if I was going to be watching a six-year-old, first of all, I probably wouldn't watch him by myself, okay? Secondly, if I was, I sure as hell wouldn't take her back to my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to explain that one. Not me, not Detective Kaylin. You're going to have to explain why you took a six-year-old girl back to your bedroom. We were alone in the house. Alone in the house is one thing. 
taking her to the back to the bedroom is totally something different. Well, for us in that dinky little apartment, that bedroom was a second. Uh, it doesn't matter. You took a six-year-old back to your bedroom so you could rape her. You took her back to your bedroom. You yeah. admitted that. And I don't necessarily like, think of like the bedroom as a place where you. Oh come on, Daniel. What are you, what are you gonna do in a bed when you're laying down with a six-year-old? You're sick. What do you think you're sick? Happy and that's what the jury's gonna see. The jury's gonna watch this tape and watch how you have no remorse at all. How you don't feel bad about what you did. How can I feel bad about something I didn't do? You did it, Daniel. It's clear as day. We have a six-year-old gonna say you did it. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have him come in with the results of that test and say you failed. Mm -hmm. So who are they gonna believe? That six-year-old girl, so remember the emails? You're going to bring a six-year-old back to your bed and lay in bed with a six-year-old and let her kiss you? Well, if you want to drag my ass to court, and you're okay then with her sitting on I'll have to you? have all these other kids that we had. You took advantage of her because of her situation. And, and you know what? That's going to earn you more time in jail. That is sick. You took advantage of a six-year-old who had a bad home life. That was the first thing you told us in here about her. Yeah, and that's all the more reason to try to you don't be a six-year-old that back to your bedroom, Daniel, to be a friend to her. I mean, come on. Well, if you're not thinking like a monster, then it's, you're not. That is thinking like a monster. You don't take a six-year-old back to bed. You know what? I got a six-month-old granddaughter. I don't even change her diaper. Don't even change her diaper. It is a shame because it's the society we live in today. And the, the people I deal with every single day that do things to children. That's my job. Yeah, I investigate you crimes against children. Like that, you no. You know what? You don't put yourself you do in situations. You're a racist. You do when you're a child molester. When you're a pedophile that's and you're as you fucked up in the head as you are, you do think that way. And that's why you took her back there. Because you knew that you were alone with her and you had the opportunity. And you did. And you took advantage of it by showing her pornography. That is sick. You are sick in the head. You need to get help for yourself. Once you walk out of here, you need to go get help for yourself. Because you are sick. If you're okay living like that, and this wasn't a mistake, then you're truly sick. You need help. You are messed up in the head. And it's disgusting. You know who else is going to think it's disgusting? Every single person that reads your name in the newspaper, the judge, and every person that's sitting on that jury, they're going to think you are disgusting. You are sick in the head and disgusting because you're a pedophile. And I can't stand it. You, Daniel, look. So, you want to raise children and walk away out of here thinking that that's okay? That's on me. That, that is disgusting. And you can live with yourself like that, but you need to go get help. I don't think you're a monster. I think you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I think you made a mistake. I don't think you're a child monster. I don't think you're the guy that he's saying you are. I don't. I can see it in your eyes, Daniel. You want to tell me the truth, but you're afraid. You're, you're afraid of what's going to happen. What people are going to think. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to think any less than Daniel. Okay? Because I'm a religious man. I know people make mistakes. And I know that when people make mistakes, they go before God and admit their faults. He's just and righteous to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's what the scripture says. And I think you made a mistake, Daniel. Tell me the truth. Trying to remember, and well, remember. the thing is, if it's I, I can see how it sounds a little shifty or whatever, but I'm trying to remember details as they come to me. Right. So that's why it's so like. What else are you remembering now? Because I can see you're, there's there's something going on that you want to tell me about. What do you remember now? Then I'm still trying to figure out how I ended up with her in my house in the first place. Okay, but we already know she was there, so it doesn't really make right. a difference how she got there. We know she was there, okay? And we know you're back in your bedroom. 
what I need to know, Daniel, is how did you come to have sex with her? I did okay. not have sex with a six-year-old or her old she was. Okay, well, she's on your lap, okay? We know that. You're laying in your bed, you're on your back, she's on top of you, okay? How did it happen, okay? Maybe think of all I the way in her. Do you think what? I think she said something about one play boyfriend girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Something about like I think from the way she talked, it's almost like she's seen things at her house, not just with drug use, but probably with. Uh, lewd behavior with the adults in the house, but I can't remember if she said that specifically or it was just something I interpreted from her actions or interpreted from something she may have said at that time, but I thought I remember her expressing that somehow, like she said just weird how natural it was for her to climb up on me mm -hmm. like that and try to do that. Mm -hmm. Do what? Try to kiss me. Okay. And you, you said you interpreted that. How did you interpret it? Well, I interpreted it as just like, okay, this offends me. Stop. But also it's just like when I'm looking back and I'm analyzing what I saw, it's almost like she saw this before and she was trying to recreate what she saw mm -hmm. with me for whatever reason. But I just thought that was weird. No, I'm not sure if I thought that was weird then or if I'm just the way I'm looking at it from a third perspective and trying to remember. But it was weird how Yeah, it's just weird how she was so nonchalant or whatever, like like it was rehearsed or something. Like she wanted to have sex with you. Like she wanted to I don't I wouldn't know if she wanted to have sex with me, but she just wanted to re re and it's almost like she wanted to recreate some sort of romantic moment she might have seen. Like I don't know if if that's what was in her mind, but I don't know if she if she was just what what it was other than that, but. There was no intercourse between me and her. I don't know why the polygraph or the test would say otherwise. Well, it says that because it's showing signs of deception, Daniel. It's showing signs of deception, showing signs of anxiety. The other thing she's going to testify, Daniel. When she left that day, her vagina was bleeding. She's going to testify to that. She's going to testify that when she left you, after you stuck your penis inside of her, it hurt so bad she cried. And she cried when she went home, and she lied to her dad and said she cut her leg and hurt her leg, and that's why she was bleeding from her vagina. She's going to testify to that. She's going to testify that you stuck your penis, and it's erect. We ask her, was it soft or was it hard? She said it was so hard that it hurt her insides, and that she bled. And she's going to testify to that, Daniel. Well, that just sounds like something you would assume would happen if it happened. Exactly. There's no assumption. That's going to be the truth because it did happen. No, and that she didn't happen. Testify. She's going to testify that it did happen, Daniel. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's stacked against you right now. And you're not helping yourself. You're not helping your situation by still denying that it didn't happen. When you're given all these little explanations as to her coming in the back bedroom and getting on top of I'm trying to figure this out as much as you are. Then, then tell me the truth and there's no figuring it out. The truth is that the truth of the matter is... I'm Daniel, trying to figure out how because listen, whatever happened between us back then, how that could be... Whatever happened is what happened. 
you took her back in your bedroom, mm -hmm. you showed her pornography, and then you stuck your penis inside her. She's going to testify to that. She's going to testify that she was on top of you. You were laying down, and she sat on top of you. She's going to testify to that, and that you held her while you stuck your penis inside of her. Okay? Now, I don't know if it was the movie that you saw that got you aroused and you just made a mistake because she's coming on to you, as you said, and you just were at a weak, vulnerable moment. I don't know. But I do know that something happened, Daniel. And I just want you to tell me the truth. It doesn't change the way I think of you as a person. Because you know what? The only difference between me and you is the grace of God. And I tell people that all the time. I'm not one of them people that condemn people. Because I see people's faults. So it's not your place to condemn people. You're correct. It's not. God's the judge, not me. That's why I don't condemn. And that's why I show my heart forgiveness to people. Because I want you to forgive me if I do something. Just like I would forgive you. Look, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to figure this out as much as you are. Trying to figure out how point A to point B turn into X. Point A to point B is the fact that you two were alone. Okay. Point A was her in your room. Point B was you went back to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, whether you accidentally, if you were just sexually aroused and you put your penis there and it accidentally went in, I don't know. But I know that she's going to testify that it did and that it bled. Okay. Now, if you were going to sit here and say, yeah, I was sexually aroused, she's sitting on top of me, I'm watching a porn movie, I got aroused. And I accidentally stuck my penis on her, in her, and it didn't go inside of her, but it touched her. Oh, yeah, it just accidentally so, fell into her. I'm not saying that. I, what I'm saying is if that's what you would have said to me, that's an explanation as to what happened, okay? Mm -hmm. But the sitting saying nothing happened, nothing happened other than the fact that I took her back to the bedroom and watched TV, I laid her back, and she sat up on top of me and tried to kiss me make out with me. That's only partial truth. That's only partial truth. Because the truth of the matter is more than happened than just that. And that's what we need to find out, is what happened and why did it happen. Well, I'm sorry this uh, Sasha is having problems. I'm sorry she wants to blame me for whatever. And, and I you're right, there are plenty of men that came in and out of her house. She, she, she's well aware of that. Her dad had all kinds of friends during that time period. Not a one of them, she's going to say, touched her. And just like you said, you had many kids in and out of that house. Either nothing happened or they just never came forward. But something happened with Sasha. And in your own words, something happened. Yeah, but not to do what she's saying. Well, then there, there's the, the, the then lies the problem. Because you know what, Daniel? I've been doing this for 18 years. I might have put myself in a stupid position, but I'm not. There's two sides to every story. Okay, okay. you know what? There's his story. Her story, and in the middle lies the truth. And that's what I'm trying to get to, the middle of the story. When I first the met truth. my wife, she took, we went out for, for a walk in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. She was desperate to try to get in my pants. She had me around, she had me erect. I still wouldn't put out because I just met this girl. I wasn't ready for that. Mm -hmm. So why would a year or so later, I get aroused by a six-year-old. Because I think you made a mistake. That's why. I think you made a mistake. I think based on the circumstances of looking at I it. I turned it, down my a girl who wants. Because I think you made a mistake. I think you she, see. My it. girlfriend, or my wife now, had me in her hand. She mm -hmm. was really working me. And yet, I still turned her down. Well, you know, Daniel, I'm listening, I'm listening to what you're saying here. And th there's a good reason that why you turned your wife down for a minute. How old were you then? How old was your wife? Uh, she's a year older than me. Um, see, so we're talking, you know, before, and this happened before I knew Sarah, Sasha, and uh, Carlos. So, uh, we're talking 22, 23, so... Daniel, the only thing that tells me 
tells me further than that. You might have a problem, man. Because if you're you can't get aroused by someone in their twenties. Um, but you could do this. I was aroused. I was fully erect. Okay, but she had a six -year my fully erect penis in her, her hand. And I just met this woman, and here she is wanting to have sex with me in the cemetery. And regardless of how nice that felt, it's like, no, I need a little time to get to know you better. And. I never have, in the past, currently ever, interest in... We're, we're not going to entertain you any longer. Because mm -hmm. we're not going to sit here and tolerate you lying about it any longer. Mm -hmm. We're wasting our time. Okay? We're prepared to do what we need to do. And I don't know what else to tell you. All it, all it further shows me is that you, you have some kind of psychological issue where you get aroused by six-year-old little girls and you're not willing to say that you made a mistake because... I made a mistake trying mistake. to be a friend to someone in a bad situation. I'm not talking about that kind of mistake. I'm talking about the kind of mistake where... Well, that's the only mistake that I can honestly admit to. You showed, you showed her pornography and you had sex with her. And if that's the kind of person you are, you need to go get help. If you're okay with that and you're not willing to sit here and say that, yeah, it was just a mistake, as opposed to, I'm a sick individual, then you need to go get help. Because it's not normal. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not normal to have those kind of feelings for a six year old and be able to get aroused with a six year old. You need you honestly need to seek some help. Because if you're sitting here and you don't see any problem with it... I think there's a problem with no, guys to go away no, that sort of thing. No, but I'm not... Because you're sitting here lying about it. Alright, so we're going to end the interview today. And we'll, we'll keep in touch, most likely, by filing charges. And you'll have your day in court. Alright? Let's go.